Hello everyone and welcome back. Before we start, I would like you to guess where this part fits in. To make it easy, I'll add a picture from the other side as well. I have finally found some space and decided to build myself a Windows 98 PC. And when I say build, I actually say rebuild as I got this PC from a friend. This will be a fun project and the only constraint the original owner had on this build is to have as many blue parts as possible and I'm going to take that further. We will start with the motherboard, the socket 370GB GA6 OTX that supports Pentium 3 processors. The chipset is the Intel 815 EP released in 2000 and the motherboard was released in 2001. Right of the chipset and CPU we have three slots for memory modules that are able to take up to 512 megabytes. The real cherry on the cake is the universal AGP slot that will offer me the ability to test a lot of pre-2000 graphic cards. The BIOS also has the option to set it to 2x but we will look into that a bit later. The motherboard also has five PCI slots for plenty of expansion cards and one CNR slot that's similar to a PCI but the extension card types are more limited. I've only seen audio and modem extensions for the CNR slot. The board also offers the standard two IDE connectors and one floppy connector. The board has the standard PS2 connectors, two USBs, one parallel, two serial, a game port and the standard audio connectors. I feel like Gigabyte missed the opportunity to have more blue on this board by using more blue plastic for the AGP or the PCIs or even the IDE and floppy connectors. At the heart of the system we will place the Pentium 3 to Alatin running at 1.4 GHz. Unfortunately all CPUs come in green or brown but looking on the underside we can find some traces that somehow look bluish in color. For the build today we will use only one stick of 256 megabytes of memory. I can probably find online some blue radiators for this one, but this system is still work in progress for at least another couple of videos, so we will see later what can be done about the RAM. The graphics card we will use today is the Hercules 8500 LE that comes in a great blue shade with a blue radiator. I can almost hear the sound. For sound we will use the Hercules Muse 5.1 DVD sound card that has a CMI8738 chip. The system initially came equipped with this via PCI board that adds four USBs, but I decided to upgrade it and I replaced it with this Belkin extension board that offers only three USBs but is also blue. Finally our last extension for today is the Ethernet card that also comes in blue but this time is a darker shade. The system came with two identical Seagate IDE drives for which I already have a blue replacement but it's going to wait until the next clip. The power supply is made by Chiftech and it's also blue. I think it has a decent output on the 5 volt rail but most important besides the 20 pin and the 4 pin 12 volt power connector it has another 6 pin power connector used by some early socket 423 motherboards to provide additional power so we may get to see it in future videos. Now that we have exhausted the components, let's get back to the question from the beginning. Those of you who guessed it was a fan for a CPU radiator were right. Those who guessed even further that it was from a Cooler Master Aero radiator were also right. Before this video I took it apart in order to clean off the dust. A process that I didn't catch on camera. Instead we will look at the reassembly of the fan and the radiator. The next part of the clip took me by surprise when I've heard the recording and I need to share it with sound. The camera I'm using for most of the clips on this channel has around 12 years and the lens 15 or maybe more. There's nothing better than using an almost retro camera to capture retro parts. In the next few seconds you're gonna hear the stabilizing engine inside the lens that keeps the image fixed. You can also see me applying some lubricant to the central axe and bearings and afterwards assembling them together. The sound was captured by the microphone built into the camera and it reminded me of the ending of the second episode from the Chernobyl series. Mm. 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 
Thankfully this sound was not coming from a Geiger counter. After the blower is complete, I am fixing it over the copper radiator. The advantage of this type of cooler, according to Cooler Master, is that the turbine creates an even flow of air over the surface of the radiator, arguing that the traditional approach with a fan creates a shadow right under the central rotor where the air is not pushed in by the fan. We will investigate if this is true in a future clip with a properly hot CPU. And we will start the assembly by adding the CPU and some MX4. Next we add the Cooler Master and secure the bracket. This is easier to do than with other radiators of this type. We add a single 256 RAM module and we're ready to move them to the case. In almost two years since this channel existed, this is the first case I'm assembling. I can't blame some of you that must be thinking that this is a terrible channel if it took me so long, but the truth is I didn't have the space for it. And yes, the back plates did look a bit different 20 years ago. This motherboard is not that wide and it requires only two rows of screws. Once the motherboard is secured, I start adding the graphics card and the extension boards. Now I'm connecting the power supply for the graphics card fan to the Molex supplying power to the hard drive. And I'm thankful that we don't have to use these kinds of fans and Molex connectors anymore. The last thing to do here is connect to the floppy drive. The system came with a decent cable management before I took it apart, but I'm not going to do it in the current clip, as I may change some parts in the near future and we power it on. Together with the Samsung 930BF and Naltec Lansing ATP3, the retro setup is complete. Don't get me wrong, I would gladly use a CRT for this project, but I don't have any. Let's move to the BIOS and do some basic settings and disable anything we don't need. CPU-Z is here to show us some information about the CPU and the motherboard. And afterwards we switch to Sandra 99 for a more detailed information. My favorite useless information here is the Pentium performance rating that rates this CPU at 1615.
We will also use Everest to see some more information about the graphics card as well. For the fans of synthetic tests, I put together a small list of tests and results. Next we move to the regular graphics benchmarks. And afterwards to games with built-in benchmarks. Before the conclusions, we will look at some games from the Windows 98 period and see how they run on this system. We will start with Ignition, released in 1996, that features miniature cars and other vehicles. You could say it's a crossover between Revolt and the early GTAs, although it came before both of them. The next game on our list is 1997 Hercules, a platformer following the same storyline as the movie released in the same year. I remember having fun with this game back in the early 2000s. The next game is Test Drive 4 released in 1997, where the graphics didn't hold their value as good as other games we will look at today. From 1998 we have Death Cars, that surprisingly is one of the best looking games we have on our list today, a racing game that features car combat. We stick around 1998 for another couple of games and we are looking at the real-time strategy Dune 2000 where the player commands one of the three houses that must fight for control of the spice melange on the planet Arrakis. The last game from 1998 is Half-Life, that unfortunately is one of the first version released and the frame rate is capped at 71 frames per second without the possibility of removing it. Greetings. It's good to see you. Lieutenant Cook, follow me. We move to 1999 with Battlezone 2, Combat Commander, a hybrid tank shooter, first-person shooter and real-time strategy game. In the first mission you are sent to dwarf planet Pluto to investigate a call where the local base came under the attack of an alien force called the Scions. Thank 
God, get me out of here. This place is crawling with I don't know what, but it ain't friendly. The lieutenant will get you out of there, but you must head for my coordinates to the west. Do you copy? Roger, I'm moving. Mm-hmm. Commandos Beyond the Call of Duty, released in 1999, is a standalone expansion yes, pack for behind enemy lines and it needs no presentation. Right this real-time tactics game is All probably right. the type mm. of game that needs Going. its own review mm. clip. Rather than being presented as a few minutes of gameplay during a hardware evaluation clip. Also it looks like Fraps is not working. Alright. Hmm? Yes sir, coming. Alright. Going. Yes, okay. Going. All right. Coming. Mmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Going. Mmm. Yes. Welcome to the Ramsey Center. Also released in 1999, System Shock 2 is an action role-playing survival horror where the player assumes the role of a soldier, trying to stem the outbreak of a genetic infection taking place on board of a starship in a cyberpunk depiction of 2114. Step into the grav shaft to proceed to the street level recruitment. Released in 2000, Earth 2150 is a real time strategy game placed in the 22nd century where Earth was pushed out of its orbit and towards the Sun by the conflict of two factions. The goal of the game is to collect enough resources to build an evacuation ship to journey to Mars. Insane was released in 2000 and while it is an off-road racing game, it engages the player to some strategy as the goal of the game is to be the first that reaches a certain gate on the map. As the player and the AI competition race towards a gate, when the gate is won, usually a new gate opens in the direction where you came from and the ones that were last in the race find themselves in the pole position for the new gate, so if you're first to a gate, it's better to wait for the AI to approach it to give yourself a better chance for the next gate. We're back with Need for Speed Porsche, a game from 2000 that is present in almost every clip on this channel. This time I was hoping that by using an ATI Radeon I would get the fonts problem fixed. But it looks like the 8500 graphics card made it worse and now the letters are jumping around like the PlayStation 1 graphics. Thinking I was missing a font and knowing that the Windows 98 service packs had some additional true type fonts. I installed the 3.53 service pack only to be faced with the same issue. At this point I gave up trying to discover and fix the problem on my own and hit the forums. And the solution was to enable an isotropic filtering and set it to 4x and the fonts now are as good as it gets. Since we are on the topic of experimenting, I would like to ask anyone that got so far in the video to express their opinion on how you want the capture to look. On the left I have the original screen that is being enlarged by the capturing device to 1920 by 1080 and has the default color space profile. On the right we have the original 4x3 resolution with a more vivid color profile making it look closer to how I see it on the Samsung BF940 monitor. The downside of this capture is that the quality decreases as I enlarge the video for the YouTube resolution.
2001 is here with black and white, where the player takes on the role of a god, ruling over several islands. The player interacts with the environment with an on-screen hand that can be used to pick up objects, people, to throw or navigate the environment, and so on. The story progresses as the player interacts with the golden or the silver scrolls. Oh, holy one, I kneel before... My brother, suffering a fever, has left his... Uh -huh. He's so weak, I'm... <laughs> If you find him and bring him home, I'll give you one of the three gate stones. It's in my house. Hey, I got a plan. Why don't we trash thy heart to object? That's well, that's kind of the lost brother is in some trees through the pass. There you are! I've been so worried! Thank you for your benevolence. Here... We're still in 2001 with Max Payne, a third-person shooter that needs no introduction. The game gets more than a decent frame rate on the system. Usually at this point we look at Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but today we will look at Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, a first and third person shooter from 2002 based on the same Quake 3 engine. The first few missions are a bit more inclined towards the shooter type, while the latter towards hack and slash. And by the looks of it, I can fully understand the stormtroopers not hitting anything with this blaster. I think it's high time for the Empire to go back to the drawing board with the Blastec E11 blaster rifle. Blasters aren't going to do much good against that. I'll see if I can find a way to get the door open. Wait here, Jan. <laughs> GTA Vice City needs no presentation, and after looking at the settings, we are surprised that we still get around 30 frames per second for this 2003 game.
there's no Windows 98 without DOS, and although this system would not be my first pick for a DOS machine, we will evaluate its DOS performance and some games anyway. As usual, we start with Phil's DOS benchmark pack, and we can see that the CPU and the graphics card are quite fast for these tests. Although Windows 98 Second Edition is perfectly capable of restarting in DOS mode, we again turn to Phil's computer lab for the restart in the DOS mode PIF file and inspect the contents of the config sys. In the auto exec section, we are forced to put the entries for the sound card at the top so that the driver for the CMI8738 gets picked up. Once we restart into DOS, we are greeted with some information about the sound card and we can move on to the games. And we start with 1989 Wolfeed that has some music but no effects. Nineteen ninety one civilization also seems to exhibit the same behavior. Nineteen ninety two Dune seems to have all the sounds and the effects, but I may be wrong as I haven't played this game in more than twenty years. But at least everything sounds good to me here. Nineteen ninety three Day of the Tentacle actually starts good but somehow stops and it soon hangs. The game crashes every time and I may need to do some more trial and error with the sound card. Mm. The 
GTA London has no sound, so this means that I may even start looking for another sound card. In the end I found this configuration to be quite able to do most of the games from the Windows 98 period. And I think it's even able to step into the start period of Windows XP as well. The sound card was actually decent in Windows 98, except for death cars where there was some cracking noise, but it had many issues under DOS. There are many things still left to be done for this blue build, like replacing the hard drive, maybe finding a better sound card for DOS, or finding a computer case with even more blue on it. But for now I'm really glad it turned out this way, and it's time for me to dive into some games from the 2000s. Thank you for watching and see you next time.